From a programmer's perspective, concurrency in Go is super simple. Put the keyword Go in front of a function call and the function becomes a Go routine and executes independently of the rest of the code. But then, what are Go routines exactly? Are they system threads or something else? Indeed, Go routines are something much more lightweight than system threads. To explain how Go routines, system threads, and CPU cores are related to each other, I want to make use of an analogy. This is a little gopher chef. This chef represents a Go routine. A chef needs something to cook with, so let's give our gopher a pan. The pan represents a system thread. A thread provides a context of execution to a Go routine. To actually cook something, the pan needs some heat. So we put it on a stove, which represents a logical CPU. A logical CPU is a virtual CPU core, which can either be a single CPU core, or, if the physical CPU supports hyperthreading, a single hardware thread. The stove can be the only one or one of many in a large kitchen. The kitchen represents a physical CPU. With this analogy on the screen, I will continue to talk in terms of logical CPUs, threads and go routines. For the sake of brevity, please also allow me to make a few simplifications by leaving out details that are not strictly necessary to know from the perspective of a programmer. The goal is to get a general feeling about the behavior of Go routines. On a given logical CPU, there can be exactly one system thread and one running Go routine. A thread, however, can have a number of runnable Go routines assigned. They are waiting in a local queue for their turn. Occasionally, the running Go routine gives way to one of the waiting Go routines, for example, when it has to wait on a channel to deliver some data. This switch is quite efficient since it happens local to the logical CPU. Sometimes, Go routines need to do system calls, for example, to write data to a file. Typically, a system call blocks the entire thread. Therefore, both the Go routine and the thread are getting parked while the operating system processes the call, and another thread is either unparked or created and takes over the local queue. Then one of the runnable Go routines in the local queue can take over. When the system call returns, the Go routine becomes runnable again and gets reassigned to a local queue. The parked thread remains parked to be available for future system calls. There is an exception, however. Some types of system calls have their own thread running, like, for example, the network polar that processes network communication. In this case, the Go routine that makes the system call is assigned over to the existing thread and no thread parking is necessary. While our program runs, Go routines eventually finish their work and exit. When the local queue of a running thread becomes empty, the system looks for runnable Go routines in one of the other local queues and takes half of the queue over. This way, the system avoids that some logical CPUs idle around while others are overloaded with work. This step is the reason why the Go scheduler is also called the work stealing scheduler. If there is no work to steal from other local queues, the system looks into the global queue. The global queue contains runnable Go routines that have not yet been assigned to a local queue. This way, the system can keep the work balanced across all virtual cores. I hope the Gopher chefs were able to give you a general idea about how Go routines are managed for you in the background and how the scheduler goes great lengths to maximize CPU capacity with minimal overhead. And that's it for today's QuickBit episode. See the channel for more episodes or visit my blog at appliedgo.net or my Go courses site at appliedgo.com. Happy coding! Mm -hmm.